In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Uh, this is uh, Father David from Holy Transfiguration Church, and uh, we are trying to continue our Tabor meeting, Transforming and Building Oneness with Our Redeemer, um, on the life and the writings of St. Anthony the Great, uh, the lamp of monasticism. Um, and during these times, we're trying to take advantage of the video recordings um, so that you can keep yourself as best as you can growing in the Lord and taking the full advantage of this time of Lent. Um, so we will uh, just jump into um, looking at the writing of the first letter of St. Anthony the Great to the monks. Um, I will uh, bear with us as we try to get this going. Um, <clears throat> so uh, St. Anthony um, wrote actually uh, seven letters um, and uh, we're going to extract, especially from the first letter, what we know about um, the theme of last Sunday and this coming Sunday, uh, the prodigal son and the Samaritan woman who are the best models for us for repentance that we find in the Gospels um, of the Great Lent. So before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the seven letters of, of St. Anthony to the monks. Um, they were um, not just for monks, but anyone who wants to grow in Christ. And uh, but if you compare or look at all of the seven, the first is um, probably the longest and it has the most unique uh, style and theme. Um, it's more of an introduction to the, to the spiritual life or the monastic life because he wrote to monks. Um, and he focuses on the theme of asceticism, of course, purity and repentance. And that's why we thought this would be the best for, for this time of the Great Lent. Um, and... and uh, the main theme is how does the spirit of repentance lead us and lead our mind, body, and spirit into a life of holiness. Um, and in comparison to the other letters, though, they're more on along the lines of what we'll see next week, God willing, um, grace and salvation and uh, how to protect ourselves from the dangers of this age. Um, so um, when we look at the first letter, um, the, again, the main theme is repentance. Um, and the three different personalities of how God works with them to lead them to repentance and um, kind of like the order of, of how the repentance works. Uh, it starts with the Holy Spirit and then um, he directs our mind and our body and, and our um, heart um, in, in the life of purification. So uh, let's just jump into the text um, and let the words speak from them, for themselves. Um, St. Anthony says there's three gates of repentance. There's three doors um, that we need to go through, or one we, we pick one of them based on our personality um, that leads us to, to a life with God. And he says these are the three gates by which souls come to repentance until they attain the grace and the calling of the Son of God. Um, he says the first one, um, there are those who are called by the law of the covenant, which is in their nature. So it's more of an, a natural inclination, if you will. Um, and which original good implanted in them the very first creation, the word of God came to them and they doubted not at all. Um, if you think about it, these are kind of like, if you're a parent or you've seen children growing up, the ones who are like the perfect student or the most obedient kid or the one who's very easy to, to get along with and to get them to do what you need them to do. They're actually very rare to find, um, but nevertheless, they bring joy to the heart. Um, and St. Anthony gives the example of Abraham, the patriarch. He said, for when God saw that it was not from the teaching of men that he had learned to love God, uh, from the law planted in the nature of his first compacting, God appeared to him and said, get out from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house, into a land I will show you. Um, so he, he gave him a difficult t test to just get up and go and take everything you have and I'll show you. I won't tell you everything now. Um, and he obeyed. He went doubting nothing, but was ready for his calling. Um, and, and he says, this is the prime example. This is the perfect uh, example of this approach. Um, and in my opinion, <laughs> uh, St. Anthony was also um, in, in, in this group of calling. If you remember in his life, 
um, he, he didn't let one word of God fall from the ground. He loved his parents. He was obedient with them. Um, he, uh, he, he directed his life to, um, to do what was best, to try to be the perfect student, even though no one was looking and no one really cared. But he had a great zeal to do what was right. Um, he says, toiling and seeking the fear of God and patience and quietness, they achieved the true manner of life. Why? Because their souls are ready to follow the love of God. Um, again, very rare uh, person uh, to find, um, but when you do find it, it this type of person brings joy um, to all around them, just like St. Anthony did, just like Abraham the prophet did. Um, <clears throat> okay, second type. If you're not this stuff, it's okay. <laughs> um, it says, we find in the second type, calling those who hear the word of God or the written law, which testify of pains and torments, the, the punishment prepared for the wicked, and announce of the blessed promises, the heavenly kingdom prepared for those who progress. By the testimony of the written law, then, their thoughts are roused up to seek to, to enter into the calling. So just by hearing the word of God, um, the law of the Lord is undefiled and it gives life to the soul as the psalm says. Um, and I think this perfect example of this is the gospel of last Sunday, um, sorry, this coming Sunday, the Samaritan woman. Um, she just needed a few words with Christ, a few minutes, um, and it transformed her life. Um, and uh, he continues by explaining the third type, which is the prodigal son. <clears throat> the prodigal son um, is the the type that we see, their hearts are hardened from the beginning. And they persist in the works of sin. Um, so even though you might not obey right away, you don't have the natural desire to do what is good, um, but you're stubborn and hard-hearted, um, like a lot of us are sometimes. He says, somehow the, God of, the good God of mercy sends upon such souls the chastisement of affliction. So there's tribulation, there is affliction, there is temptation, there is... Um, difficulties in life. And he says, why? Because until they grow weak and they come to their senses and are converted and draw near and enter into the knowledge and repent with all their heart, they also attain the true manner of life. So here we see the blessings of the tribulation um, that lead us to repentance. Um, and so regardless of what type of personality you are, God is there. And God is able to use these um, circumstances around us um, intentionally to, to direct our hearts to seek him. Um, <clears throat> and St. Anthony says, but I believe that those who have entered the struggle with all their heart and have made themselves despise all afflictions of the flesh, valiantly resisting all the warfare of the devil that rises against them until they conquer. They are first called by the Spirit. So here he says, don't take God out of the picture. Um, we don't do any of this by ourselves. It is God who calls us uh, to a life with him. He knocks on the doors of our heart. And not only that, but it says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who makes the warfare light. So in the beginning of our spiritual struggle, it's easy. <laughs> he says he makes the warfare light for them and sweetens for them the works of repentance. The joy here is the joy of, of, of the, the soul who turns to God, showing them how they should repent in body and soul um, until he has taught them how to return to God, their own creator. Um, and this is uh, the the again the Holy Spirit who takes the lead, um, just like the life of of Saint Moses, uh, the strong, um, who led a beautiful example of repentance. And um, it was easy in the beginning, and th there there's but nevertheless it's a struggle, uh, and um, the Holy Spirit is continually directing and and guiding us. Um, as St. Paul says in the, to the Romans, he also helps in our weaknesses. For even when we want to pray, he says, we don't know what to pray for as we ought. Um, but the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Um, the Spirit prays for us. He prays through us um, and, and gives us even the words and the groanings, which we don't know how to, how to say. Um, and uh, that is the, the description of the person who is directed by the Holy Spirit. Um, and when we don't know what to do, when we don't know what to say, when we don't know how to live our life, we 
submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and he will show us and speak to us and direct our life. Um, <clears throat> the third uh, part of uh, this letter um, uh, talks about what happens on the inside when we want to repent. How, um, how does all this work together? Um, and he dissects the human being in the three main parts, uh, the body, the mind, and here I think the soul, um, this term is quite confusing. Um, even in scripture, sometimes it's used instead of the word spirit, and sometimes in, is used instead of um, the, the mind, the word mind, um, and sometimes it's used to mean heart. Um, as we'll see, most likely, in this case, he is, he is referring to the heart, um, because he already uses the word um, body and the word mind and, and um, the word spirit, but of course here he's talking about the Holy Spirit, not the spirit of man. Um, okay, so here he says, how does the body work in repentance? It says, the body is purified by much fasting, many vigils and prayers, and by the service. If you look at the life of St. Anthony, he's saying this from half a century, at least, of experience. Um, so when, when the church pushes us to fast and to pray and to serve, it's, it's also for our own benefit, because this physical act with the body uh, purifies our, our hearts, and, and, uh, and it's the, it, it directs it um, or helps complement the, the spiritual work of repentance that is also going inside of us. And he says, again, this is led by the Holy Spirit. The spirit of repentance is, his, is the guide, uh, is made his guide in these things and tests him by means of them, lest the enemy should turn him back again. So God is not out of the picture again, or else it would just be um, a matter of um, diet, and exercise, which <laughs> that's not what fasting and prayer is, um, by all means. <clears throat> yes, it's a component, but this is a spiritual act, not, not a, only a physical. So um, he, St. Anthony continues, then the truly the guiding spirit begins to open the eyes of the heart um, to show it repentance, that it may be purified. So we can't just say, God, open my heart, or uh, let me repent. but we need him to guide us. And there's, again, a physical component as well as the emotional and spiritual component. Um, and they all work together, just like the mind works with my body and the organs on the inside and to, to do things, <laughs> to, to breathe, to walk, to, to speak. Um, so uh, St. Anthony shows um, by how these, the body, mind, soul work with the Holy Spirit. Um, to do good. He says, but what's, what is the uh, um, level of uh, priority of what comes first or who is in charge? The Holy Spirit is number one. The Holy Spirit directs everything, um, but he works with the mind first, um, and he is the guide of the mind, and the mind becomes the guide of everything else. It says the mind becomes our guide as it begins to learn from the Spirit how to purify the body and soul through repentance. Um, <clears throat> and so um, we can't put them all on the same level, but again, um, even so the, in, psychology teaches us this, that if we're feeling a certain way, the mind has power over our feelings. Um, so we change our thoughts, we change the way we think, and that in turn will help um, uh, have more positive um, thoughts and more positive emotions and more positive actions. Um, so I mean, <laughs> this might appear after much research for psychology as something new, but St. Anthony is, is describing this by, by the power, work of the Holy Spirit inside of him. Um, <clears throat> so he continues by saying the body is brought under the authority of the mind, being taught by the spirit. So again, spirit, Holy Spirit, mind, body. Um, as St. Paul says, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Um, and he uses this verse quite a lot. Um, and also St. 
um, or His Holiness Pope Shenouda III of blessed memory, um, when he talks about fasting or spiritual growth, he refers to this verse uh, often as well. So our, our blessed uh, desert fathers um, uh, know how um, the dis important the discipline of the body is, um, but what is what are what does it bring subject to our thoughts and ultimately the work of the holy spirit um and this is important this is important to to at least uh, attempt to discipline our bodies and bring them into subjection um to our uh, thoughts which are filled with um the spiritual things he says the mind sanctifies the body from food from drink from sleep and in a word from all its emotions or actions until through its own purity it frees uh, the body um, again it's subjecting it to give it freedom <laughs> it's um, taking it captive so that it's not subject anymore to 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 the weakness um, that it's bringing about by its own actions um, kind of like uh, a doctor who is seeing let's say it's his patient is beating himself up um, right or or an autoimmune disease, for example, he he, he straps the the um, patient down to give him medicine that will cure him um, from him hurting himself. Um, so that's what the 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 mind does to the body. So no, no, you have to fast, you have to pray, you have to uh, um, watch um, or or take vigil so that you you can be free from. I'm sub submitting yourself to your, to your own desires and weakening yourself because of it. Okay. So then um, uh, he says, these things I've said to you, beloved, that you may know how one must repent in body by fasting, prayer, vigil, and in soul, in the heart, by having the emotions of, of uh, desires for God and for holiness and for the kingdom, and to sanctify them both. Um, how? by subjecting them to the mind. And if the mind conquers in this contest, then it prays in the spirit and, and, being, and um, begins, sorry uh, for the typo, begins to expel from the body the passions of the soul that come to it from its own will. Um, so then we're, this process of repentance is beginning to release all the impurities um, that, that come to it from itself, from its own weakness. Um, Okay, and he says, this is what makes man to be straightened, um, cutting off from himself of the lust of the flesh. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so then this is just a summary here of the three different gates, the example of Abraham or Anthony himself, then of the Samaritan woman or the person who is um, encouraged by the, the word of God that reminds us of heaven and hell. Um, and the rewards and the punishment of doing good or bad, um, that can lead a person to the kingdom or to the life of repentance, or if nothing else works, there's tribulation that helps us soften our hardened hearts um, to realize the need uh, for God and for the holy life. Um, finally, we just conclude with some other quotes from uh, other letters, especially letter number three and letter number four of St. Anthony, where, it where he talks about the importance of knowing yourself um, and thereby knowing God. Um, and he says, those who have drawn near by, by being taught by the Holy Spirit, they come to know themselves, just like the prodigal son. He began to know himself um, and uh, he came to himself as it says um, in the gospel. Um, it says, they have cried and said, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out our Father. So again, the Holy Spirit is, is giving us um, the desire to, to call God our Father. Um, and this desire is connected with the understanding of yourself. Uh, how? Um, he says, those who have drawn near by being taught by the Holy Spirit come to know themselves. Um, uh, sorry, it was just a repeat. <laughs> he says in, in the letter before, he says, truly, my beloved, I write to you as to wise men um, who have been able to know yourselves. For he who knows himself knows God. And he who knows God is wor worthy to worship him 
um, in spirit and truth uh, as, as is proper. Um, so uh, there is a, a strong link between knowing myself and knowing my God. Um, and um, if we are submitting ourselves to the Holy Spirit, if you work towards one, you also are um, indirectly or even directly beginning to work on the other. Um, and uh, that's why he, he continues in, in the fourth letter saying, but my beloved in the Lord, know yourselves. For those who know themselves know their time, and those who know their time are able to stand upright, to live holy, and not to be moved about by diverse, not to be influenced easily by all of um, the, the, the false teachings that are out there. Um, so uh, finally, um, we prepare ourselves for the, what is next, which is um, the love and the grace, which we find in the rest of the letters. Um, and those, uh, so again, we're, we're following the Gospels of, of the Great Lent, but also um, it, it shows us the, the progression in the spiritual life. If you remember the first time we spoke, we talked about the importance of the, the lives of the saints and how it impacts us to seek the kingdom, like the, the church taught us in the first Sunday of the Great Lent. And then when we seek the kingdom, we know there's going to be tribulation and the devil is going to fight us and, and um, try to redirect our heart and our mind to the things of the world. Um, but if we respond with um, fasting and prayer and vigilance, um, then the Spirit leads us to repentance. Um, and once we're on the, the proper course of repentance, we begin to even experience more the grace of God and more the love of God and more how God was always directing us uh, to, to, to this manner of life that he wants for us. Um, and some people will just look at, for example, the tribulation and say, why is God allowing this tribulation? But if you see the whole plan, <laughs> this is just to, to soften our hearts, to experience repentance so we can see the love and grace of God and experience it fully. Um, may God give us uh, this spirit of repentance and the um, experience of his uh, deep love and grace for us that we may um, uh, live with our loving and, and gracious Father in the kingdom of heaven. And glory be to him now and forever to the age of all ages. Amen.